Hello everyone, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this red panda in acrylics. So when I'm working with acrylics I like to paint in the background first. There's a couple of reasons for that but mainly it's so that when I put my subject directly on the top I can paint that fur on the outer edge of the subject so that it overlaps the background. That's going to mean that my subject is not going to look like a sticker, there's not going to be any harsh edges where you've painted your background after and around your subject. Now I use my airbrush for this background but if you're using traditional brushwork I would be recommending to do this kind of background using a fine mist sprayer bottle, keeping those layers of paint wet for longer and then using a blending brush in small round circular movements to get this really nice soft effect. I do have a video on Patreon showing you how to do the technique here with a fine mist sprayer bottle and I've also got a video available here on Patreon about how to blend acrylics which I'll link in the description below. Now for this painting I did use the line art that I provided for the Patreon tutorial and I've used my transfer paper underneath that so that I could get that outline on my canvas. Now this is the method that I would be recommending even if you're freehanding your sketch. The reason I say that is canvases don't erase very well because they are more of the expensive surface to paint on you, you want to make sure that they are neat and tidy. So what I like to do and what I would always recommend is use a scrap bit of normal printer paper, freehand your sketch onto that and then use transfer paper in exactly the same way as you saw at the beginning of this video to get your outline on your canvas. What I then do is map in my base layers. Now for this, because I knew this was going to be a tutorial for Patreon, I decided to do my entire base layer for the face and the paws here at the very beginning. I want to try and make sure that I've got this as accurate to the reference photo as I possibly can. I usually like to work in small areas even when I'm mapping in my base layer here but because this was slightly smaller, this was an 8 by 13 inch canvas, I felt like I was able to work with the whole face in one set layer for the base layer. When I work with my details you'll see that I do start to then break it down into smaller sections but for this base layer this worked really well. I like to use Liquitex Basics and they are naturally quite transparent so you're going to see some of that background colour showing through on your base layer. What I do is once that layer is dry I then start building my layer of refinement which is what you're going to start to see here. I always start with the eyes and then I work on the area around that and building up a little bit more depth with this second layer. Now this refinement layer is also what I do when I work with pastels and for me it really does make such a difference. You'll see here as it starts to develop I'm already starting to build more depth even though I'm not focusing on any kind of detail. I'm just starting to reinforce more where my shadows are, where those highlights are and getting that very subtle transition and also indicating at that fur direction. I'm still making sure I'm working with a fairly larger sized brush, not too big though, I do like working with smaller brushes but I am that, s that next few sizes up from my detailed brushes just so that I've got a variation within my brush strokes from my base layer up to my final details. And at this stage I'm already indicating at that light source. The light source is coming from the left hand side so the right hand side of his face has got a little bit more of that darker greyer base layer. When I'm happy with that refinement layer there, I then start building my detailed layers. Now these are going to be numerous layers sort of built into the one step here. And the reason is, as I've said, I like to work in smaller areas, but I do start to switch over more towards my detail brushes and my liner and rigger brushes. However, at this stage, I'm only focusing on the detail and the depth of fur that I can see closest to the skin. It's not necessarily always the details that are closest to the viewer. I build up those layers gradually. Now, the Patreon version of this, I did split into two parts because this is a, a long tutorial. So in total, it's over seven and a half hours. So the footage there is considerably slower. That's where you notice these individual layers of detail that I add. When it's sped up here, it looks like all of these details are put in at one set layer, but it really isn't. You allow for that drying time, you're mixing these colours and you're building up the depth gradually. And for this Patreon tutorial, I did something slightly different with my setup. As you can see here to the right, I had my palette on show throughout the entire painting so that members could see exactly what colours I was mixing at the time and how much of each colour so that they could follow along to the tutorial a little bit easier. And this seemed to be really useful and the feedback that I got from Patreon members. So this is a setup that I'm going to try and continue with future tutorials. The video that I uploaded here to YouTube last week was all of pastel footage but it was six top tips on how to draw fur. 
Now, although that was that pastel footage, all of those tips there would also be exactly how I would work with acrylics. So I will also link that in the description below. The only difference would be is the last tip six, and that's where I mentioned about when you've got lighter breeds, working with your lighter base layers first. But with acrylics, we don't have to worry about filling the tooth of the paper and muddying up the colors. As soon as that base layer is dry, if you do find that it's not the right color or it's not quite the right tone or value, we can just wait for that to dry and paint over it. And one of those top tips that I mentioned there is fur direction. And I think this red panda here shows it perfectly. I had a really good base layer down and I was indicating at that fur direction from the very beginning. But with these details that I'm adding here, I'm reinforcing that with each additional layer that I add. I'm also varying the brush strokes, so some are slightly thicker, some are longer while others are shorter. Having that variation there is going to help make this fur natural looking and, and that much more realistic with the depth that we're after for this kind of photorealistic artwork. Now something that can really save you some time is I've started working on the branch here because it's behind the ear and the paw. So I didn't want to be adding and painting those details on the edge of the right ear because I was going to have to then paint over them for the branch. So whenever you've got any part here where it is behind a subject, get that in first so that you can then overlap your details and you're just saving yourself that little bit of time. Now in the Patreon tutorial, I really do show you all of the techniques that you can use depending on the supplies that you've got. So for this branch, this is out of focus, the tail and the leaves are also out of focus when we get to that part of the tutorial. So in the Patreon version, I show you three main ways that you can do this. One being a fine mist sprayer bottle, and that would be my preference if you haven't got an airbrush. The other one is using an airbrush, and you'll see that later on in this video. And then the other is just using traditional brushwork. That's what I'm using for this tutorial here. So I'm using just one clean, damp blending brush and using that to soften my edges. Now I go in depth with this in that Patreon tutorial. So if that's of use, I will link that in the description below. But if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'm more than happy to answer them. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm mixing the colour that I want, I'm building up my layers from dark to light, applying that colour and then I'm using a clean but slightly damp brush to blend out and get that really nice soft transition. One of the common complaints that acrylics get is that they dry too fast and they're difficult to blend. However, in this real-time tutorial available on Patreon, I show you that actually we can prolong that drying time and keep it as wet for as long as we need. As long as you keep applying that layer of fine mist, you're going to be able to build up as much depth using wet on wet blending techniques, very similar to how you can do with oils. And there are many times where I actually use my hair dryer to speed up the drying time. So I find acrylics is really the best of both worlds. You can prolong that drying time if you need to, but they have that ability to dry within just a few minutes so that you can then get onto the next layer and complete your paintings in a much more realistic time scale. I used to work in oils as my primary medium and they were one of my favourites to work in at the time. But when I started doing pet portraits, I was finding the long drying time that I was having to give between my layers was really starting to be more of a hindrance. And that's why I switched over to acrylics. And as I've said, you've then got the best of both worlds. So for the foliage here, I started mapping this in just using traditional brushwork with that damp clean brush to get those soft edges. You'll see occasionally there I'm using more of what looks like a makeup brush just to blend those edges out even more. Now in the Patreon version, as I've said, I do mention about using a fine mist sprayer bottle and I show you how to create that effect using that technique. And that would be my preference if you have one of those. Because you're applying a layer of that water, a very fine layer, and then when you blend out that, the edges have that moisture next to it to get those softened edges. And that's why the foliage here in the top left corner I've done with traditional brushwork. You'll soon see the lower left corner I'm going to use my airbrush. So that I can try and show you the different techniques with the various options that members on Patreon might have. What I did do for my painting is soften these edges here with my airbrush. But if you had a fine mist sprayer bottle, this is the type of effect that you'd be able to create. And this is the section here where I've just used my airbrush. I've started off with my darker greens and I'm going to build up my layers from there. 
Now the one thing that I would recommend and I found this in the tutorial here which I speak in depth about is when you're working with your finer needles in your airbrush it really is important to have a slightly thinner airbrush paint. I use Createx paint for most of my airbrushing but for these narrow needles in the airbrush they're just far too thick. So what I did is I made it work for this painting but I then did go out and purchase some Golden's high flow acrylics and they're more like an ink consistency so they're far thinner and because these paints are, f are designed for more of these narrower needles you therefore don't run into the same problems with clogging that I was having with the Createx paint. So when you're working on any part of a painting where you want that fur to be out of focus on the edges it's really important to make sure that you get a really good base foundation down first. You can see here that I'm still working with a larger brush throughout all of the brush strokes. That's also really important. When you start trying to use your finer detail brushes, when you're trying to work on an area that's meant to be out of focus, you find yourself adding more detail than you should be. So one big tip that I would say is always make sure that you're using your slightly larger brushes for these areas. And also with the tail part, I show you how to use that blending technique using a damp brush so that you can really help to soften those edges that much more. So it's these final details that make the artwork go that next level. So what I'm just starting to do here is hint at those very subtle details on the darkest parts of the fur where some of that light is reflecting. Now that I've got the branch in place, I can then add these final details that overlap here. And this is going to make that red panda seem like it's in front of the branch, which is exactly what you want to try and create. Now as I mentioned all of this branch was very soft and out of focus but there was a very small part near the face where you could just see a little bit more of that texture on the branch so I wanted to try and make sure that I added that. It's only very subtle though when you've got an area just like what I've mentioned with the fur. When you've got an area there where you do need it to be soft and out of focus try to avoid that temptation with adding too much detail. When you're getting more towards the end of the painting like what I am here, it's really important to make sure that you occasionally start to take more steps back away from your easel and viewing that portrait more from a distance. You'll start to then notice things that you might want to change in your artwork. When I'm working with my wildlife subjects, I do also take that time to just put that reference photo aside and look at my painting and think what could I do to it to make it better in my artwork. When you're working with pet portraits we don't have that ability as much because obviously it needs to look like that pet we need to follow that reference photo but with wildlife work you can add elements you can change things that you think might make your painting better and that could be something from just adjusting and hyping up your contrast really focusing more on one light source so there are many things that we can do to change and really improve on our painting also for projects like this we spend hours, days and sometimes weeks at the easel on one painting. We can sometimes get a little bit blinded by the details so by stepping back from our easel and really looking at things from a distance it's going to help us to notice what we might need to tweak in our artwork. And here is a photo of the finished painting. So I really hope this tutorial was of use. If it was I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content hit the subscribe and the bell button and I'll be uploading another video here to YouTube at the weekend. As I've mentioned if my slower more often real time tutorials are of use I'll link my Patreon in the description below where I offer pastel and acrylic tutorials. I also have a Patreon library on my website so that you can have a look over there at all of the tutorials that are available before you sign up.